Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. On yesterday's episode and on Movie Math, I discussed how many in Hollywood feel that Catching Fire's box office debut was disappointing, despite the fact the film broke many box office records. And now Wall Street joins the party pooper bandwagon. Yes, that's right, yesterday Lionsgate stock fell by about 8%. How is that possible considering that Catching Fire was the fourth biggest opening of all time? Well, Wall Street had actually predicted a bigger opening uh, by only about five or ten million, but still, having the film not reach that projection uh, was considered a disappointment. Not only that, but uh, Wall Street's job is to look to the future of a company, how it will continue to perform. And they feel that Lionsgate has a really big, almost unswallable uh, franchise coming down the pike, or hopeful franchise, and that's Divergent. So I've also discussed this and my concerns that Divergent just isn't clicking with mainstream audiences and there seems to be very little hype surrounding it. And now Wall Street seems to feel the same way and it's already damaging Lionsgate stock and reputation. Uh, now many of you, when I first brought up this potential idea that Divergent isn't really going to be a big hit with uh, mainstream audiences, some of you said, well, wait a minute, Divergent has a huge fan base that you're underestimating. But I would counter that Mortal Instruments also has a huge fan base, yet failed to perform at the box office. And I think the real litmus test is not how many people buy the book or are fans of the book, but how many people are excited about the upcoming film. Uh, whenever I post something about Divergent, or I see many other YouTube channels or websites post Divergent news, it just doesn't catch on. Uh, and if you do a trailer search here on YouTube, you'll see that Divergent's trailers really don't have the same kind of viewership as uh, more successful films such as Twilight, uh, Hunger Games, and even other things like Maleficent or World War Z. There just isn't a lot of buzz for some reason for Divergent. It just isn't crossing over. Uh, so I can understand Wall Street's concern, actually. Uh, but I think this points to a bigger question about, you know, just yesterday I discussed uh, someone's a viewer question about uh, our audience expectation create, creating disappointment in films. And I, the short answer, you can go back and check out yesterday's episode for my full answer, but the short answer was, no, it's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with demanding quality for your dollar. But what are these expectations from Wall Street? Company expectations, uh, you know, they're putting tremendous pressure. What, are they, what is that doing to the business? Because when you have Wall Street uh, pegging, uh, catching fire and opening around 170, a number that no one in the industry came up with. I hadn't seen that anywhere. Uh, wh wh where Wall Street's analysts got that from, who knows? It just seems to me like pie-in-the-sky predictions. Uh, then you start to get into trouble. When you start to have people who aren't uh, do their research and aren't grounded in the business uh, starting to put their two cents in where their two cents really count, then you might start to have a really big problem for Hollywood uh, where they have a very public business uh, and everyone's going to start backse uh, backseat driving. I feel that they really can't help it with the fans because uh, they need the fans. And I guess to some degree they need Wall Street. But uh, maybe if Wall uh, Hollywood did a better job driving, nobody would be backseat driving and telling them where to go. So that's the first story of the day. And it just goes to show you that even when you think you're on top of the world, uh, life comes in and uh, slashes your, your Achilles tendon. All right, so that's the first story of the day. The second story of the day is that uh, one of the big supposed Oscar contenders this year is American Hustle from David O. Russell. It has a wonderful cast, uh, a top-notch cast, but very little... Um, press. There hasn't been a lot of publicity for it with the mainstream, with the public, and there hasn't been a lot of Oscar uh, campaigning for it either. They really kept the film under wraps. But apparently yesterday they began their campaign by having a screening in Los Angeles uh, for industry people and media uh, to the point where people even from the East Coast flew out specifically for that screening so they could see the film because it was considered such a big deal. And the buzz is extremely good. The buzz is actually amazing. Uh, it might just be the Emperor Has No Clothes because people had to wait so long and they're very excited to be part of the first group to see it. But the buzz is that it is a tour de force, as you would expect from David O. Russell. People feel it'll be his third major Oscar contender after the fighter in Silver Linings Playbook. And then it'll probably get nominations across the board. But everyone is particularly uh, signaling out Jennifer Lawrence, saying she has a small cameo here, kind of like Anne Hathaway in Les Mis, which is just so incredible and knocks your socks off. Uh, it was also a SAG screening, by the way. I believe it was a SAG screening, so a lot of actors were there, and they were really taken with her performance, with people saying if she had one last year uh, for Silver Linings Playbook, this would be her year. Maybe she'll do uh, uh, two years in a row. I mean, Tom Hanks, I think, was around that with Philadelphia and Forrest Gump. So when the industry really falls in love with someone, uh, they can go all the way, especially in the actress categories that are usually very light. 
Uh, but I also wanted to ask you guys what you think about this. Just regardless of how good the film might actually be, what do you think of this new um, uh, ego-driven uh, ad campaign and uh, awards campaign, which is, I find personally very off-putting. I have felt that American Hustle has really said, hey, are you not going to like this movie? We don't have to tell you what it's about. Um, we don't have to really show you any of it. We just have to show you that it's a David O. Russell film. Look at the cast and their period costumes, saying crazy things, wearing crazy hairstyles. Look, as I said, they're all ha they all have rollers in their hair on camera. Oh, this must be a piece of uh, great art. And also some of those um, very, you know, I think uh, fanboy and critic-friendly uh, lines, such as, you know, uh, Christian Bale saying, oh, you know, you know, the stuff about Jesus and, you know, what's the true art, the, the, the original painting or the beautiful forgery, uh, you know, that kind of, I don't know, it seems almost like a, a manipulation pulling the strings to me that, you know, that I can see. Uh, so I have major problems with that. And it, it, it's kind of, um, uh, it's, you don't see it a lot, but I think there, Wolf of Wall Street, to some degree, is pulling the same uh, thing. It has not been screened yet either. Apparently in December they're going to start screening it. But I don't know if that's uh, a result of a, uh, a strategy in terms of campaigning or the fact that it simply wasn't done. Because as I've reported, Martin Scorsese handed in a three-hour cut to Paramount, and they're like, no way we're releasing a three-hour Wolf of Wall Street. Tear. I would have watched it. Uh, but... So apparently he's had to cut it down, and now it's ready to be screened just a couple of weeks before it gets released to the public. But those are two films that are very late to the party, but everyone's saying, hey, they're the King Kong. Uh, they can just come crashing in whenever they are ready. So, but I just want to know what you guys think. Are, do you like this kind of... Uh, do you think... Do you, are you like, hey, David or Russell in that cast, that is all I need to know. Touché, uh, 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 you know, American Hustle. Or do you agree that maybe you would like to be a little bit, you know, courted a little bit more, because especially in such a uh, competitive Oscar season? All right, so those are the first two stories of the day. The third story of the day is I want to point you out to a very disturbing article in The Hollywood Reporter, and I put a link down below. It's not a specific link, so you might have to just, I mean, when they change their feature, you might have to go and search for it on their website. I don't know why they don't have a, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why they don't have a specific link to the story. It's very frustrating. But it's a feature on animal cruelty in movies and how it's becoming a really big problem. And it's kind of an expose on the, how the American Humane Society, which is tasked with making sure that animals aren't harmed on productions, and they're the ones who can say uh, and give the movie the right to say no animals were harmed when making this film, how that, uh, the a AHA is really dropping the ball and actually not even just being careless, but, uh, you know, being bought off by the studios. And uh, there's an instance of one representative having an affair with a producer on a film, so she was protective of um, their image because of that, of the film's image. But it's also really big films, like Life of Pi is uh, signaled out here, The Hobbit, um, Prince Caspian from Disney, the, one, one of the Narnia movies. And it's really, really disturbing to read about this. Uh, and, you know, to get, for instance, also it's not a film, but what happened on HBO's Luck, uh, Lucky and why it had to be canceled. And it's just an appalling thing that you would think that, you know, right up there with the way, you know, those expose on the veal and mink and the way those animals are treated. And that this is going on in Hollywood. And to think, it makes me a little bit uh, sick to my stomach, actually, and really regretful of, you know, paying money to see those movies, to think that my money went to uh, harming those people, and you know, uh, you know, those animals. And, when, and any life, I think, is precious. Uh, for instance, they also said on uh, a Matthew McConaughey movie, a uh, romantic comedy, uh, I forget the name of the actual movie, but that a squirrel was crushed to death. And you're like, really? A squirrel lost his life over a Matthew McConaughey romantic comedy? I mean, it's just appalling. Uh, you know, you, we, Life of Pi, we thought the worst thing that happened there was what they did to the special effects uh, company that worked on it, I believe it was Rhythm and Hughes. Uh, and apparently they're also uh, in making tigers swim for their lives in uh, uh, wave pools uh, and dragging them out by their necks on a rope. Uh, just barely saving their lives. And I think that Hollywood really needs to get to, on top of this, and I hope that people are likewise similarly appalled. And I don't know why we have these national organizations uh, that just have no teeth or just so easily bought over. It's really, I urge you to go check out the story. Uh, again, the link is in the video description. So those are the three stories of the day. The viewer question comes from Patrick Doss, and I really liked this question. I like all the questions you guys ask, but this one I was very inspired by because I think it's really um, apropos of uh, what we're talking about a lot lately. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday I talked about how Pixar was having problems, and Patrick says, you mentioned about the fall of Pixar. I liked how you capitalized fall. So it's like the fall of Pixar. It's a major event. It is a major event. Um, so Patrick says, what do you think that DreamWorks is doing differently that now has them on the rise? 
This is fascinating, Patrick, because when you think about it, at first I was like, you know, excellent point, Patrick. DreamWorks is on the rise. But however, that's not really the case. DreamWorks is coming off of some huge failures. Now, they had The Croods, which was a very big success this year, one of the top grossing films worldwide of the year. But they also had some colossal failures that they had to counteract. They had uh, Turbo, huge flop, uh, and Rise of the Guardians from 2012, which was a really big, you know, both of those films were embarrassing flops. Uh, but basically, uh, so, so, you know, I think DreamWorks is still hit or miss. Uh, wildly so, and that's you know they're not doing themselves any favors. I feel by being so prolific, uh, three movies a year starting in 2014. But I think that the reason that DreamWorks is starting to come off so well is that while they used to just kind of make these you know Saturday Night Live uh, animated you know pop culture mashups, like I think that's what the Shrek franchise largely was. So while it got a lot of cash at the box office and had its fans, it wasn't really respected. I think that it's two new franchises, Kung Fu Panda and. Uh, uh, how can I forget this, How to Train Your Dragon, the most amazing franchise ever. I'm so excited about the second one. Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon are very genre-y. They are genre-like, fanboy-friendly franchises. You know, uh, Kung Fu Panda brilliantly uses, uh, you know, they both draw an anime, but Kung Fu Panda has the martial arts uh, genre that it draws from, which is very popular, uh, and, but it also adds cute and whimsy to it, but it does take itself very seriously. And then How to Train Your Dragon 2, I think it was really adding, you know, this Viking warrior aspect to it, which is only increasing uh, as the franchise continues. And also, you know, the, I think it's going to be building up uh, Hiccup is, you know, uh, animation heartthrob, which I think is going to be very interesting to watch develop. They almost had that with Jack Frost, but it never really clicked. Uh, but anyway, though, and, they, and the other thing is, as I just said, those two franchises take themselves seriously. Uh, as much as Madagascar is about having fun, uh, the flip side, Kung Fu Panda, while it has a lot of jokes in it, does take the martial arts aspects quite seriously. And the character development of uh, Poe, the main character by Jack Black, also seriously, and Shifu. Uh, there have been some very touching uh, Shifu Po scenes that are really memorable to me, and beautiful visuals, by the way. I, I really have been criticizing Disney for a lack of visual panache lately, but some of the scenes uh, in both How to Train Your Dragon, especially Kung Fu Panda, uh, have just been stunningly beautiful and really reminiscent of their genres and very appropriate, drawing from the live action, their live action counterparts. So I think that those two franchises are what are single-handedly raising DreamWorks' reputation. Uh, it's, I, and I compare How to Train Your Dragon to Legend of Korra. Uh, and Legend of Korra also has a lot of Eastern influences like Kung Fu Panda. So it's kind of like the three of those guys are all kind of in a mix there. And so uh, we'll see what happens if Disney can have its own stock raised, uh, both uh, business stock, Hello Wall Street, and also fan stock with Big Hero 6 uh, with their big, huge influx um, infusion of Eastern influences. So that could help them. But you know, is it always just bringing over uh, Asian influences? Uh, it helps. Look at how the, the fan fervor over Pacific Rim, even though it wasn't a huge box office. I mean, it didn't make a huge profit. I mean, it did make money at the box office, but not enough to counteract the incredible amount of money that was sunk into it. Uh, but you know, Asian influences definitely help. But I just think the genre elements are important and also taking your franchise and the movie you're making seriously. So I'm um, seeing Frozen this week. I'm excited to see uh, if they take it more seriously. People are saying that they do. The trailer isn't uh, indicative of the actual movie. So we'll see. So that's today's morning movie news. Thank you for tuning in. You can write below what you think of today's three questions as well as the viewer comment. And write down below what you'd like to see covered tomorrow as well as any questions you might have. Thanks for watching. Bye.